was trying to replace the charge I see and I don't have the correct equipment to do so. Blew some caps and floated some stuff on the board, didn't want to spend a lot of money because I am sending this in for a new iPhone 13. Can you give me an estimate? I have the IC. Thanks. Hey everybody, Jason here. Today I'm working on an iPhone 6S Plus PCB that was sitting here for a botched repair rescue. This is a board that was having charging trouble, so this guy actually tried to replace the little TriStar IC, but uh, I'm going to say it's significantly more bad than that. Let's have a look under the microscope. So here we are looking at the TriStar area of the board, and you, as, <laughs> and as you can see here, it has had quite a bit of things rearranged here. You know, the more I think about this, it's actually not exactly that bad. You see, everything is pretty much still here, it's just in the wrong place. So not only do we have some severe issues here around the TriStar area, it looks like we have completely like flattened this baseband power management IC. And by we, I mean this guy. And it's just like, it's sort of just like we've had a traffic jam here where everything's been heated up super hot and just like shoved all over the place. So just exactly how widespread is this? Oh, for the love of all things holy. <laughs> Well then, okay, so as it turns out, this board is actually significantly bad. Now, one of my main concerns with this board is that this has the A9 CPU on it, and the A9 CPU, it is really, really, really sensitive to having the, the, the RAM damaged by heat. And if this board, if this board was heated hot enough and held hot enough to just kind of like smear everything all over the place down there, I'm wondering how hot the rest of it got. What's it look like around NAND? So looking at the NAND area, I'm actually pretty pleased to see that we don't have any ball squeezage, so it doesn't look like it's really overheated there. But you know, before I start on this, before I do anything to this, I'm gonna go ahead and pop the cover off the CPU, and I need to see if the RAM is swollen, because as it is right now, I'm going to go ahead and I believe I'm going to attempt to repair enough of this damage to get this board to power up. However, if the RAM is swollen, then it just, it's not going to make any sense whatsoever to come along and try to repair all this carnage. This will just be a candidate for an immediate board swap. So let's see what we can do here. So looking at this board with the naked eye, I mean, it really doesn't look all that bad. Let's get the CPU shield off of this thing. I have got my hot air set on 400 billion degrees C with an airflow of 40. We're just going to begin warming this up. I'm just kidding. I'm at 430 degrees C with an airflow of 40. I'm going to sort of just kind of warm the entire board up. Swoop in on that CPU shield and we are waiting for the board to just pleasantly fall out from under it. Here we go. Come on, baby. Really strange for it to take that long with my large nozzle. I've actually got an air conditioner sitting behind me blowing and just that airflow alone is enough to cause me to need more heat. So right off the bat here, the CPU really doesn't look bad. I'm not seeing any bubbling of the RAM. So I think this area of the board is likely gonna be okay. At least that's my hopes anyways. Yeah, looking at it under the microscope, everything here around the CPU looks a-okay, so we're not going to be worried about that. Hmm. Boy, oh boy, this is, uh, this is absolutely, positively quite a bit of carnage. I've also got uh, a couple of other iPhone 6S Plus boards that are not in quite, a bad, quite as bad a shape. So what I'm going to do here is dig in. I'm basically just going to wipe this area of the board clean because it's... I, I really don't know what else to do with it. Some of the components I'm going to try to nudge around and just kind of get them to slip right back where they go. But for the most part... I'm going to be wiping a lot of this clean and seeing what at minimum I need to get this to boot. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to a smaller nozzle. I'm actually going to use my smallest nozzle. And I'm just going to kind of start working on this. 
I'm going to start with my hot air set on, oh, let's say, uh, I'm going to do 375 degrees C with an airflow of 40. That's significantly hot, but I'm actually using a small nozzle. So the first thing I'm going to go after here is this big black IC. This is the baseband power management IC, and I can see that it is just completely visibly flattened on this side. So I know that it is not going to work, like period. Now, to be completely straightforward, I don't know if the A9, if the iPhone 6S will boot without baseband at this day and age. Um, this is something that has changed quite a few times, or at least a couple of times with software revisions. Oh, I wonder what kind of flux we got on here. I also wonder what kind of solder the last guy was using. So far, it's not melting. So I'm going to just kind of try to pop this baseband power management IC out of here. And I'm not, uh, I'm probably not going to just put it back right away. I'm going to see if this phone is capable of starting up without it. It seems like iOS 12 changed it. As of iOS 12, we didn't need baseband. But also, you know, we didn't need NFC any, you know, we didn't need NFC back then, but now we do need the NFC IC or these dang things will fail the passcode. So you never know what Apple is going to do with the software, fellas. All right, should be just about up to temp here to lift this chip. Nope. I'm going to go ahead and set my hot air to 430 degrees C. I normally work with a larger nozzle, but I'm getting used to doing things with a much, much smaller nozzle. So let's go a lot hotter on this board. In any minute, this thing is going to let go. And let me fling that chip up off of there. Come on, baby. There we go. Ooh, yeah, look at that. We have a significant amount of bridging here. So we're just going to go ahead and leave that like it is for now. Uh, what can we do with all these caps? Now, there's probably a good number of these caps that are not going to be needed, but I don't really have the foggiest clue as to which is which. This big old hunking cap right here, it probably could go... Boy, this... Hmm. Let's take all these caps out of here because this is just... I mean, isn't this lovely? I'm going to pick these things up by the fistful. There we go. I mean, what else am I supposed to do here? I can't even tell what I'm looking at. Dun, 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 dun. Get off of my tweezers, pretty please. All right, where are we at? Let's just keep yanking caps. Now, there's a lot going on here with the control of this hot air. Uh, for people that are doing this and, and you may be new at it or you just want to try it out, um, you'll notice as the very second that I see that we have solder melting, I'm pulling back on my hot air. I'm just, I'm running this board right up to the very minimum temperature that I can use to remove this stuff without just like pulling. So, and you know, the last guy that worked on this, he didn't overheat this board the best I can tell uh, because the RAM still looks okay and we don't have any ball squeezage around NAND, so this is probably okay. All right, moving right along here. I think we're going to leave this um, this oscillator thing right where it's at. It seems okay. Ish, wait, no. It's completely turned, right? It's turned. Seriously, isn't it turned? Yeah, I'm sure that's completely rotated. That's supposed to be on the board like that. Holy smokes. So let's go ahead and get that out of the way. It's kind of cool. It's got like a, you know, it's got an extended trace under it, like sort of like an antenna, but they needed extra length on that for some oscilloscopic reason. Okay. Now I think I'm going to go ahead and remove this shield, this bottom shield here. You know, it's much easier on the board to do that by cutting it. But I never have liked to cut these things, so I think I'm going to go ahead and remove this with heat. Let's see, I'm actually going to start down here toward the bottom. Looks like my board holder is going to catch it. Let's see. All right, starting to give. I'm just going to work it from the bottom to the top here. I don't think there's a whole lot 
that I could do to cause this board to be worse. I mean, I guess I could, like, drop an anvil on it. That would probably be a little bit worse. Let's just try to not do what the last guy didn't do, and that is overheat the board. I'm leaving this little metal bracket removal here in real time so you can see just sort of how painstakingly tedious it is to go around the board and peel this thing up one little bit at a time. Almost there. Come on, baby. Yes. All right, so there we go. We've got the smashed up baseband thingy out of the way. This other thingy was already out of the way, but more importantly, we've got this crazy shield out of the way, which by the way, on this phone, I will not be putting that back on. This is actually getting sent back for insurance, so I may probably recommend that this guy drops a brick on it or something, maybe. Okay, so moving on with this TriStar area cleanup, I'm just going to go ahead and just kind of keep pulling things out of the way here. I mean, this is actually significantly bad. I think possibly some of these components I might be able to just kind of put back into place and save some time. Come on. What in the world? Is it welded on there? That's madness. Do this from the other way. This one I think is one of the only ones I can just put back blindly just because you can flip it over and look. Two pins on one side, one on the other. I'm just going to just sit that right back on there. We can leave it the only one. Okay, let's keep moving all these caps out of the way. I should probably just turn my hot air on max airflow and just kind of blow everything out of the way. That would be a lot less time consuming. Oh man, I sure wish this one would have stopped after the first twitch. You know, I, I think this guy, he probably knew that he was in trouble, but just kind of kept digging the hole a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper. I think just about everybody has found themselves in a similar situation in life. Plus, this guy said it himself. He didn't have the right tools, so I really don't want to be too hard on him. All right, so I have most of the bumper car carnage cleaned up, and now I'm going to go ahead and slop some flux on the board and see what I can do about shining up all these pads. It is definitely going to need a new TriStar IC, but... I really don't know if this model will boot without the baseband IC. In the past, it would not. A software change, I believe, changed that. Um, but uh, it's 2021. This is an iPhone 6S Plus, so let's find out. Did I say 2021? Where did this year go? I meant 2022. I'm going to start getting some flux on here. This is some chip quick SMD 291 tacky flux. I actually wind up really liking this stuff for several reasons. It hardly ever haunts me, but, you know, sometimes it does. So I'm going to begin flooding all these pads with some 6337 leaded solder. And get this thing ready to receive a brand spanking new IC. My hopes here is that I can get it to boot without having to fix everything. Just going to fluff all these up nice and pretty. We're going to need significantly more flux than this. Let's just go ahead and get some flux on here. There we go. I am definitely not going to be nitpicking on this one. If I can get this thing to boot and connect to USB... That is it. I will do absolutely nothing else to this phone. I really don't know why I'm sitting here. I, didn't I just say I wasn't going to nitpick this phone? A couple of these components here around the TriStar IC are going to be pertaining to the TriStar IC, so... I'll probably have to worry about that. Now, let's move right on over here and fix this carnage. I'm not exactly worried about making that functional. I'm just worried about not having any huge shorts under it. I think everybody will agree that we do have to worry about shorts here. 
So let's get this all smoothed off. Going from a 6S to an iPhone 13. How about that? That's a heck of an upgrade. We're going to go ahead and use Lewis Rossman amounts of flux. Looking nice and pretty. We're going to need to significantly reduce the airflow, raise the temperature. I'm going to go down to an airflow of 25 and a temperature of about 370. And I'm just getting rid of any potential bridging here and maybe pull that cap back in place. No solder bridges. All right, I think that gets rid of all the solder bridges here, I hope. So, it looks like I have pretty well got this board down to needing a brand spanking new TriStar IC with 36 balls on it. And then we will likely need some of these components that are laced all around it. Here is what that area of the board is supposed to look like. So I'm actually pretty glad to see that uh, this here is a no stuff. The one back up here under the shield is no stuff. We've got one, two, three components there. One of them is a glass looking one. And here we have one, two, three components. One of them is a glass looking one. That is acceptable. Let's see, right over here next to our little um, transistor thingy, we do have, there's a resistor up under here that is essential, but that's a little bit hard to get to. What is that actually supposed to be? If we have a look at ZXW tool and we zoom right on in and we look at the TriStar area, we can see that one of those two components is a capacitor. You know, it's a 16 volt, uh, 51 picofarad. And then the other one, it is a 10, thousand big one resistor so 10,000 ohms of resistance on the other one and you know I think I've got lots of 2.2 K's uh how could I not have 10 K resistors in stock like what kind of a board tech am I to not have 10 K resistors okay let's harvest one so to get my grubby little mittens on that 10 K resistor I'm just going to kind of stab a screwdriver up under here and like pry on it like that oh yeah there we go and now i have a crystal clear view of that 10k resistor i'm gonna swoop right on in here and swipe that off the board just waiting for stuff to melt here almost there There we are. I'm going to sit those both right there for a second because somehow in all of my infinite nitpicking here, I forgot to fluff up those pads. Good enough. I need to get this guy to a lock screen. I will then proceed to beg him for a passcode. I think this is one where I've, guaranteed, where I've said that, yeah, I'll send it back with the data intact. I'm not a real stickler, fellas. If people... Um, if it looks within reason, or like it could possibly be a good YouTube video, I will do this without a passcode. I will send it back, able to start up, and allow them to do their own data transfer. Now it is risky because some phones will wait until after the passcode is entered to begin their little reboot issues. Um, but for the most part, I mean, I, I don't mind helping people out. Like if they really, really don't want anybody to see what's on the phone i mean whatever i mean i'm not i'm not charging them enough money to where it's like a humongous gamble for me um really or for them so there's no sense in turning away money just because i can't very well secure the repair okay so we have this transistor thingy back in place we have a 10,000 big one resistor and we have some sort of a capacitor now how about all of the other components just to the right of that what's that look like on our donor so on our donor we have a one of these caps is vertical vertical and the other two are horizontal so I'm just going to go ahead and grab the vertical one here I'm not going to put everything back in place I'm for sure going to make sure that we have um, 
you know, resistors, inductors, and stuff like that in place. And a good amount of the caps because it's just... I want this thing to boot and not give him any trouble. Now, how about that big cap that's in my way? Does that still on... Is that on our board? No, it is not. Let's do this big cap first and get it out of my way. So, this big one here... Gonna sit it right there. Okay, now it looks like we probably have three caps there. Hmm. Well, what could go wrong with a little bit of guessing, right? Okie dokie, there's one. Now let's go ahead and get the other one in place here. I mean the other two. Sort of looks like one. Let go of each other, please. Hmm, okay. Oh, well, those are gone forever. So let's go ahead and um, pretend like we don't need those. All right, so looking back at ZXW Tool, just beneath TriStar, we have these two caps. Is there any other components here that I feel like I really need to be concerned about? Um, right here, there are three missing components. One, two, three. Let's see if those are present on our donor. They are. Those are, you know, I don't know, two blue ones and a uh, brown one or something. So I'm going to go ahead and grab those. It looks like it's going to be about three times easier to go ahead and grab these all at the same time. There we are. These are just going to sit exactly like that. Let's just go ahead and see if I can sit these on there. I need to get some flux in there, but I can't very well let these go. They'll just stick to my tweezers and move all around. There we go. Now, let's get some flux on there. And see if I can't uh, coerce these components down into their proper spots. We're going to try to get this capacitor to slide right over there like that and then this little filter oh come on now stay in your home right there there we go so there's those three back in place and Starting to feel uh, a little more promising. I figured this would probably take me a couple hours. How long has it been? I, I don't know. All right, what else are we missing here, fellers? We are missing, but better yet, let me rephrase that. What else are we missing that we actually need to transfer data? Let's have a look at these missing components just to the right of that TriStar IC. Having a look over here again at ZXW tool. You know, I'm just, gosh, that's, uh, that may actually be needed. That is listed as a 6.3 volt, one microfarad. And I don't want to wind up with any weird, like, um, harmonic-y stuff going on. So I am leery about this one cap. What line is this on anyway? TriStar Bypass. That's on one leg of this transistor. I'm going to... I am going to, if these components are present on the donor board, I'm going to go ahead and just swap them over. So looking at our donor board... Those two components are absolutely present. I'm going to do them one at a time because I don't want to blow anything away. So let's do the bottom one here first. Actually, no, let's go after the top one first. One. That goes right here. And these caps are significantly different in value, so I don't want to mix them up.
Okay, let's grab the next one while everything stays hot. So this cap may or may not be important, but we're going to move it right on over anyways. All right, back on over to our customer's board here. I'm going to try to get it to sit, oh, you know, right about like that. But more importantly, let go of my tweezers. There we go, right about like that. Just going to keep warming this up. And it should shimmy right on down into place. Come on, baby. There we go. Like brand new. So then, that has that couple of caps back in place. What else are we going to need here? I'm just going to kind of sit these two boards, like, maybe side by side here a little bit. Just kind of see. Cap, cap. We're going to leave a couple of these smaller caps alone. All right, let's move over here to our little uh, oscillator thing. Move that over. I know it was there before, but um, we're going to get it moved over in the proper orientation. All right, let's warm this up carefully and yank it off the board. I didn't think it would happen so quickly, but I have just about reached a point where I'm ready to see if this thing will boot without the baseband IC on it. Or what it does, period. So this component here, I really don't think it is required to boot. I think it is only required for baseband, but I'm just moving it over anyways. Now, without turning that or anything, I'm just going to sit it right onto the customer's board. Just like that. All right, I'm keeping the board warmed up, and I'm going to just load this thing right on down into place. And for the most part, I like to try to let surface tension do the work for me. If you are interested in any of the tools that I use here, links to what I use are in the description below. Good enough. I'm going to go ahead and set a TriStar IC on here, I believe. Is it clean enough? No. We better just go ahead and nitpick it a little bit, shall we? Now, for this, I'm going to be using a brand spanking new IC. And I'm not kidding. These are actually brand spanking new ICs. Here's how large these are. They're extremely huge. There we have a brand. I'm talking brand spanking new IC. Let's get this thing on the board, shall we? I don't know exactly what the orientation is, so let me just have a look at the board view. It looks like uh, pin A1 is going to be up and to the left if we've got the board orientated as it is here on the screen now. So our little dot is going to go up and to the left. And I don't like this little metallic flake of a looking thing that I have over here. I'm going to get that out of the way. And it looks like we're moderately okay to go ahead and sit an IC on here. So let's add some flux to it. Turn the IC the way that it is supposed to be. And that is going to sit just like that. So a lot of people ask me how I managed to line up all of those balls and have everything just sort of like magically work. Well, it's not really magic at all. As long as we don't have any bridging or anything touching that's not supposed to be, surface tension will pull this thing into place right where it needs to be. I'm pretty much just watching for my flux to start bubbling here. That's my internal indicator as to when it's started to activate. And then I can let it go, and it's tacked into place. All right, now I'm just going to continue to heat this up until it daintily falls onto the board. Hopefully it doesn't blow across the room, but falls onto the board. Come on, surface tension. No solder bridges. Come on, baby. You know you want to do it. You know you're going to float right down on there. You're going to boot and then puke out your data. Come on, baby. I really should have reballed this with uh, leaded. I didn't, though. It's got the factory balls on it. Oh, geez, this has taken quite a bit longer than I thought it would. There we go. Mm. Come on. Dude. This is the old sticky hairy tristar installation here there it's on there good god that took so much heat <laughs> what do you think you think it's gonna boot i don't 
I think if this, on the very first try, if this thing starts, I'm just like extremely lucky. Let's try it. First, I'm going to see if it draws any sorts of like weird power before turning it on. So I'm gonna turn the DC power supply on. We are set to 3.9 volts at a uh, current of three amps. And I'm gonna hook the power supply up. We are getting an instant three amps. So this thing, this has a VDD main short. It's drawing an instant three amps of current whenever I connect power. So now my suspicion here is that all of this carnage was caused by a single VCC main short. So let's find out. I'm going to go ahead and use a thermal camera. Can't use my thermal camera. Let's go ahead and check and see what is actually shorted here. I've got my meter set to diode mode. I have got my red probe on ground and I'm going to check VCC main here. We are getting a point, uh, point zero 0.01. So VCC main is an absolute complete direct short to ground. So next, I'm going to go ahead and hook us up a ground lead right down here, just like that. Let's roll our voltage up to uh, four volts. Now I'm going to hook power to VCC main and I'm just going to sort of lay my hand on this board and see if I can feel where it's getting hot. That, that's my plan anyways. And if you're wondering exactly what this looks like to me, here it is. So I'm actually going to touch right here on these two caps up here where VCC main is. Power supply draws an instant, three amps. It's not immediately obvious, so I'm going to go ahead and give it some more juice. We are now set to six amps at four volts. I know you all are wondering why, Jason, why? Why aren't you just using your thermal camera? I got a new recording setup, see? And the adapter that I use for my thermal camera, I'm using it on that camera. So if I use my thermal camera, you're not gonna be able to watch. So here we are again, six amps at four volts. Oof, that's a nice little pop. <laughs> Wait, did I short kill it? No, I didn't short kill it. Okay, I'm feeling like this might actually be under this sticker here. I'm going to go ahead and peel this sticker off. Get that out of the way. And just try this once more. Now the current on your screen, that is just showing 3.2 amps. The power supply is set to parallel mode, so it's combining the outputs. We are using 6.4 amps. Hmm, no luck that way. So, having a look at this with a thermal camera, and let's see if the thermal camera can do better than my hand. We are drawing three amps. I'm using a C Compact Pro with a macro lens attached. It actually works really well. Looks like the bulk of the heat is right here where my finger is, and right where I'm hooking it up, so this isn't looking good. Yeah, my probe's getting hot. Boy, that, uh, that board has one heck of a firm short. Let's go on up to parallel on the power supply. We're going to do current of 6 amps at 4 volts. Let's see if that will do any different. Now, I'm going to pay real close attention here to this area where we did all the rework on the TriStar area here. Let's see. Yeah, that is where it's at. It's right there. So something right there where that, uh... yeah, it is right there. What in the world is going on there? This I see, this actually, uh, you know, this has VCC main going right to the bottom of it. And it has been extremely difficult to get enough power to flow here to, to get any heat. So I think we're probably going to have a solder bridge like right under this amplifier. Let's just pull this off a board and uh, see what this looks like. All right, here we go. Let's see if we got any 
fall smushage under, under it? Yes, we do. Look at that. So underneath this IC, if we look here at the balls, we can see that uh, these four, these are sort of like bridged together. I'm going to turn that the same way it is on the board view here. And then let's have a look at the board view. Zooming right on in here, we've got, uh, let's see, one, two, three, and four. These two pins, this is uh, this ARC SW line. Then we have also this uh, ARC VBoost line. But right here, this is VCC main, and this is ground. So I'm not sure. I mean, maybe. I mean, just maybe that's where the short is. So let's get rid of it. What I'm going to do here is just throw a little bit of flux on here. And I should be able to get away just sort of like, you know, bumping that with an iron. So we'll... Actually, I, I should have known that I wasn't going to be able to get away with just bumping it. Oh, dude. Okay, so I didn't get to just like touch it a little bit. I got to actually shine this up. Oh yeah, it looks fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. But, is the short gone? Let's get our meter set to diode mode. And I'm going to put my red probe on ground. And I'm going to put my black probe right here on VCC main. And we are getting a 0.33. That is a completely acceptable reading. So, would anybody like to... Uh, would anybody like to place any bets as to whether or not this board is going to catch on fire? I'm going to go ahead and hook our power supply up. Turn it on. We are getting 10 amps of current. That is completely acceptable. Now, for the sake of testing, I'm going to go ahead and slip this thing right on into a housing. Because if it does start up, I'm going to want to know right off the bat if it's going to have, uh, you know, charging current and whether or not we're going to have USB connect. I'm just going to go ahead and slip this right on into a housing. Wait, we can't very well cram an iPhone 6S Plus into an iPhone 6 housing. I mean, an iPhone 6S housing. So that's bad. Okay, so now we have that in a housing. Go ahead and hook up our dock flex. This housing doesn't have a power button in it. Isn't that just lovely? I'm going to go ahead and hook up the DC power supply. I'm going to see if we can get extremely lucky and see if we can get a boot prompt here. So, I'm going to go ahead and just bump it with 5 volt USB. We're drawing 90 milliamps, 240. This actually looks promising. I'm going to go ahead and get a screen hooked up here and see if this thing's going to get an image. Okie dokie, here we go. I'm going to prompt a boot with USB and see what happens. I believe we're going to get an Apple logo. We're drawing 200 milliamps. We are drawing. We got an Apple logo. Woohoo, yeah, Apple logo, baby. This thing is booting. Our work is done. Almost. Almost done. I need to see that this thing starts up to a lock screen. I need to see that it is able to charge a battery. And then um, we'll see where it goes from here. So we still got an Apple logo. The current is still jumping all around, so I'm not concerned that it is locked up yet. I believe pretty firmly that this phone is going to boot. There we go. It is actually up to the, um, you know, the icons. There's actually not a lock screen because this phone don't have a passcode. Holy smokes, there's no passcode. Thank you. Let's see if we can get some charging current. So for this, I'm going to go ahead and connect the battery like that. I'm going to connect a charger. And we should get a battery charging or an Apple logo icon. That is perfectly acceptable. This phone is drawing one amp of charging current. You know what? This actually looks very promising for being able to make a backup like right now and not later. It's charging. I got a lightning bolt. Battery's at 31%. Here comes the moment we have all been waiting for. Will it communicate and run a backup? So I'm gonna go ahead 
and get a backup created of this phone. I'm really glad to see that there's not actually a passcode on this phone because since the beginning of this interaction, um, I thought this was going to be a deal where the customer just didn't want to give out the passcode. So uh, anyways, that's going to be it for this one. I am going to go ahead because I'm not a slob. I'm going to go ahead and clean the flux off of this board before I send it back to this guy. But uh, for now, I'm going to make sure I do have a backup. I'm going to send him an invoice and give him the good news and move on to my next repairs. So anyways, that is going to be the end of this video. I really thank you all for watching and uh, I will see you in the next one. Have a good day, everybody. So here we are after ultrasonic cleaning. It looks a whole lot better, however, still looks significantly bad. I'm not going to be replacing the speaker amp, you know, the uh, basement power management IC or the WTR thingy over here. This is an iPhone 6S Plus. It is really just not worth all of that work. And uh, I'm just, I'm really happy to be able to send this back to the guy able to start up with the data intact. And I'm pretty sure he's going to be happy too. Sweet. That actually took uh, a little bit less work than what I thought it would.